Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at Morphe's taking a look at a very early version of the Beretta Model 38A. And this has a couple of features on it that are very scarce to find, including the bayonet. Uh, and I thought, even though I've done some previous video on the 38A, I wanted to point this one out to you because of those special features. So, if you haven't seen my other work on the 38A, the short version is this is arguably one of the best submachine guns of the Second World War. It is not particularly heavy. It's a little bit long, but it's a very soft shooting, very controllable, very pleasant gun to fire, and it was extremely popular with all the troops who got them. That's why even after the Italian uh, armistice, German troops took over the Beretta factory, and Beretta continued to make Beretta 38 pattern guns for the German military. Now they would simplify them over the course of the war, and really the special sauce is with the 38A. This early pattern uh, had some complications in the bolt assembly, and the longer barrel on it really makes it a nicer gun to shoot than the 38, the simplified 42, 43, and 44 models. But uh, let's, let's just dive in, take a close look at the safety switch and the bayonet in particular. All right, for the historical record, let's take a look at the markings here. We have Moschetto Automatic Model 38A Caliber 9, patented, blah 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 blah, Beretta, Gardone, Italy. This is manufactured in 1942. The XX indicates the 20th year of the fascist government in Italy, which started in 22, so 20, 1942. Serial number on this is kind of badly stamped, or actually it's badly worn and then badly filled in with this white paint. Um, it is D1800 and change. So it looks like an I or a T there. This is actually D block, uh, which is a pretty early gun for 1942, which you would expect from these early features. By 42, they were starting to simplify uh, the guns, and a lot of this sort of stuff would be going away very shortly after this one was made. Now I do want to point out, for those of you who may have noticed, uh, the receiver here has a bunch of pitting. It's been refinished, frankly not very well refinished, and it actually has a replacement receiver cap. This is the late pattern of cap. The correct one for this gun, you would actually have the end of the recoil spring assembly sticking out here. It's a little a lock as a locking button. Um, this also has the later simplified bolt assembly in it. So unfortunately it's not a perfect example of the gun, but it does have this. So of course the 38A has two triggers. The front trigger, which is smooth on its face, that is the semi-auto trigger. The rear trigger is the full auto trigger. So you don't need a selector switch. We have a safety up here, which is uh, also badly filled in, but that's fire, that's safe. And then the early guns also have this cross bolt switch. This is an additional safety, but it only works on the full auto trigger. So when I have it engaged here, you just can't pull the trigger back. It blocks that trigger, but it does not block the semi-auto trigger. Push that over, now the full auto trigger can be used. So what we have here is essentially, this is like a police style of system. And in fact, the first batches of Beretta 38As actually went to Italian police forces, both the regular Italian police and the PAI, or the Police of Italian Africa. Polizia dell'Africa Italiana. Something to that effect. And for them, the idea was you really want to make sure that the gun's only used in semi-auto unless specifically authorized for full auto. So having a lockout switch on the full auto trigger is the sort of thing that makes sense for police use. Now of course once we get into wider scale military issue of the Beretta 38, uh, that doesn't make much military sense, and as, as soon as they start simplifying the guns, this switch goes right out the window. So uh, actually pretty rare. You'll see pictures of these sometimes, but they're, they're, it's a rare feature to actually find on the gun. And what is also quite rare is to find the bayonets. So once again, the earliest patterns of Beretta 38s did in fact have bayonet lugs on them. So right there on the bottom of the barrel shroud looks like a pretty typical bayonet lug. However, bayonets normally have a locking lug at the back and then a ring to go around the muzzle of the presumably rifle. Well, there's no muzzle ring that's going to fit around this. So what they did instead is they cut this T-slot 
in the bottom of the shroud. They then took the standard Carcano bayonet at that point, and they replaced the muzzle ring with this T-shaped lug to fit into that slot. Now, these bayonets are extremely rare to find. This is like unicorn poop of a bayonet, because they were not used in the submachine guns uh, for very long, and as soon as the submachine guns stopped having these bayonet attachments, well, there was no longer anything you could do with this, short of using it as a dagger, I suppose. But it wouldn't work on the rifles, so they didn't tend to stick around. Now the other thing that makes these bayonets cool, both the ones for the Beretta 38 and the ones for the Carcano rifles, is that they're folding bayonets. So this is intended to be carried on the gun, like so. And then when you don't actually want it sticking out poking things, you push this button in, which allows you to pull the blade forward, and then rotate it back, push it in place, and it locks in this folded position. And that's why we've got the slot in the front of the stock to house the front end of the bayonet blade. So these were issued with scabbards, but this was intended to be a carry method for the bayonet. It lives on the end of the gun, so it's always there in case you need it. And they did the exact same thing with Carcano rifles, just and the bayonet was like exactly the same pattern, except with a muzzle ring instead of that T-lug. So taken off of the, the gun, it looks like this. It's worth pointing out there are actually two, well there are a total of three patterns of these bayonets. This is the middle one where the back, the actual bayonet lug attachment is a push button. Early on they had a long like rocking lever on the side and you'd push in on the lever here to lock or unlock the bayonet uh, from the rifle. That wasn't particularly reliable, so they went to a more traditional push button. And eventually they would have a third pattern where they got rid of the folding feature altogether. The bayonets look the same, but the blades are fixed in place. Before we go, I should also just point out this stock disc. It's there for unit markings uh, if you want to put them on. Uh, this was only in use for really quite early production of the 38 A's. That goes away quickly. Also not something that is uh, readily found on these guns. I think some, some of you are probably watching this and thinking, why, if these are all early features, why are they on a 1942 production gun when this is a model 1938? And the answer is, production on the 38A for the Italian army actually took a little while to get started. It was technically adopted in uh, the summer of 1938, but uh, the Romanian army put in an order with Beretta that was produced before any of the Italian guns. So. It wouldn't be until almost 1941 that the Italian army started getting Beretta 38As. This is a very early in 1942 production gun. I suspect it's still you know, within the first month or two, although I don't have specific data. So this is going to be one of the last of the very first patterns of 38A, and that's why you see it with a 1942 date. It's unfortunate that this isn't a really pristine gun having these extremely early features that are really rare to find. They, yes, they were made, but most of these early guns just didn't survive World War II, and we don't see them here on the collector's market in the US. So definitely wanted to take the chance to show this one to you. It's unfortunate that it's not a pristine example, that it's been refinished, that it does have some replacement parts, but man, those early bits, for a submachine gun nerd are really cool to see. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Big thanks to Morphe's for giving me the opportunity to film this one for you guys. Someone's going to really have a good time adding this to their own collection. Thanks for watching.